Guten Tag, meine lieben Damen und Herren. Ich, ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch, aber nicht gut genug für eine 40-Minuten-Rede. So, ich werde auf Englisch sprechen. Entschuldigung für das. Um, so, I am from the Paris PM, Per Mongers. So, my work activity is for a major telecommunication operator in France. Uh, and I'm working especially on data quality. Uh, notably, what we're doing is we're comparing um, data from various applications of the entire um, information system of the company and trying to fix uh, discrepancies that usually comes after a while. Uh, we're working with extremely large volume of data. The customer base is 35 million clients. And uh, so the, we're, we're dealing with very large volumes, hundreds of millions of records very commonly, or, or sometimes even more. You. So I have a deep interest in uh, performance. And so the first case study uh, is uh, we, were, we, were, we, we needed to compare two applications. Uh, I will call them A and F because I cannot give them name. Um, so A is a, the operator main business application. It's managing the customer base, the, the telephone subscription, the well, number of things. The other application F is very much limited and it's, uh, it has a very <coughs> much narrower scope. Uh, so way, the way we are operating this type of comparisons is usually because they are on different machines, different architectures, different operating systems. So we're extracting the data very often in the form of uh, CSV files. And then we're comparing the CSV files. So what I'm going to talk now is about just the extraction part from the A application and some transcodification which has to be done in order to be able to compare the data with, with the data of the other application, of the F application. Um, on the A uh, application, so the main customer management application of the, of, the, of the operator, we have to use a proprietary language, which I will call G, uh, to extract the data, because it's, it's, a, it's a proprietary system. We, don't have, we cannot uh, use something else. So to, to compare the, to the, the data, we have a conversion matrix transcodification matrix. So um, the way it works is that with four pieces of data from application A, we can determine a tariff plan in the application F. Uh, and the four pieces of data are one or two billing services, something called the business segment, and the platform. Though the platform is a bit secondary, but so we need to, to make a uh, a correspondence between these four pieces of data in the conversion matrix to find the tariff plan in the F application. Now, several records might actually match. So it's not like we have the four things, we get immediately the F tariff plan. We may have 10 or dozens or more of uh, records which match. In that case, we have a system of priorities and we take the most priority one. Priority one. So this is just a very simple example to give an idea how it works. So here I have, for example, this is the A application. So I have, some, yeah, I have the platform, I have the, the segment, the business segment, and I have one or a pair of billing services. And all these four pieces of data will match with something here, one of the tariff plan of the F application. As I said, sometimes uh, I don't know if I have a case here, but sometimes you have uh, several lines which will match something, and then then the then I have to select the one which has the lowest priority. The, the lowest number is the highest priority. Now, the problem with that, 
for each customer, we have 35 million customers. For each customer, we have to find first the business segment of the of the of the customer. You know, is it corporate? Is it uh, private? And the, the number of things like that. Then we have to find the active billing services, and uh, usually each client has about 20 to 30 billing services. And so, and uh, as I said, it's a pair of business of billing services which will be used to determine the, the correspondence with the F application. Which means I have to make, which means I have to make a, I just switched the Wi-Fi off. The way? No, not yet. Come on, carry back. I have to test out every pair of billing service together with the business segment and together with the platform in order to, to find a possible candidate tariff plan uh, in the F application. And, that's, and, then, and then find the priority number and find the thing. So we have a kind of combinational explosion here because we have many things to test before we can actually find out whether it is a, a, a candidate tariff plan. And so what happened is that this was extremely slow, but really, really, really slow. Uh, the first version, we started it, we stopped it after one day. We decided that we had to uh, uh, find the match for less than 1% of the, of, the, of the customers. So the whole thing would have lasted 160 days. And of course, this is not acceptable. Um, okay, I happen to be an expert in the G programming system. And so... The first thing I was asked to do was to try to improve it. So I tried to improve it in the G programming system. And I did actually succeed to improve it, but I got to 60 days instead of, instead of 160 days. And that, that's a quite nice achievement, but it's really far from what we needed. You know? It's very far from that. So as I said, not acceptable. You know, for, this, for the type of thing we're doing, it could last three days, uh, maybe even five days would be acceptable, but more than that, it's not possible because what we're doing then is we're correcting data from the, on the basis of that. And if we have a couple of days of delays, it's already not very good. But if we have more than five days, then the data may have changed. And if we're correcting it, it might just, we might just make an even more messy thing. So, and I had, I was basically short of ideas on how to improve the program in the G programming language uh, because I had basically used every trick in the book that I knew and there was no solution. So the first thing I did is to, to write a pair program to profile the, the G program because the G program is a proprietary language and there isn't many, there aren't so many tools in order to be able to figure out what's going on. Although I had an idea of what was going on, but I needed to, to certify that. So I wrote a, a profiling program in Perl. Basically what it did is it read the source code in the G, of the G program, added some counters uh, measuring the time for each uh, procedure call. And then, uh, so the, the G program was just, re re the, sorry, the Perl program was just reading the source code of the G program adding all these lines, <laughs> calculating the time spent in each procedure call, and then writing an, uh, another G program with all this. Then I compiled the, the, the other G program, and I was able to see where the time was being spent. And the result is predicti predictably that 99% of the time was taken in traversing the conversion metrics in trying to find this match between the repair of billing services, a business segment on one side, and a um, tariff plan on the other side. So, as I said, it was, planned, it was more or less calculated that it was going to last 60 days. 59.5 <laughs> of that were taken for the matrix, for consulting the matrix, and about 12 hours for the rest of the, of the process. As I said, I couldn't find, I mean, there were some tracks for optimization, but they would never bring anything close to what we needed. What did you have for the hardware uh, to, to run it on? 
Yeah. What kind of well, it's a, or this guy well, it's a it's a VMS server. Uh, it has uh, 16 CPUs. Uh, it has a lot of memory. I can't remember. I mean, it's, it is fairly big. I mean, most of the things we do, are okay. I mean, we can do it. It's it's more or less okay. But here, the problem is because of this, having to test all this combination, it really took a lot of time. Uh, so I, I said no further optimizing. In fact, there were some minor optimization that could still be done, but but uh, that would never have been enough. And how long does full export of the data to a CSV file or some, some text file? That's, yeah, that, I, I will, I, I'm just coming to that. Just move the mouse a bit because uh, pop-up oh. will last forever. Okay, I guess now it will disappear in a few seconds. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's what I would just. So what we decided is precisely answering your question, I think. We decided that we were going to rewrite the conversion part in Perl. And this means that we, what we were doing is we, ju we just do a full extract of the data. Well, not, not the full database, but the full, uh, all the fields that we needed for every customer as a CSV file. And then and then we were then reprocessing in in Perl, and that allowed me to remove the sequential read of the metric with every with every pair, and to replace that with hash lookups. So the new program just will not go too much into that. Had a number of hashes to to look. So two hashes for the for the conversion between the, the business segment and the priority, and for the conversion between a single business, uh, sorry, billing service and a priority. So that's two simple ashes, then two ashes of ashes to have, to, to have, one, to have the business segment and one billing service towards a priority, and to have two billing services towards a priority, and then one ash of ash of ashes with one segment and two billing services leading to a priority. Um, and then, then one array to just make the, the link between the priority and the, and the tariff plan on the F application. And then w the last hash is, is functionally useless in terms, of, uh, in terms of, of the business need, but it's very important because uh, it enabled me to really make things much faster. So it's the, the last hash is just a list of all the billing services which appear at least once in the matrix. The reason for it is uh, the, the catalog has about, I think, 8,000 billing services. Each customer has about 30 billing services. But for the F application, only a few of them are really used. Many of them are not used for the, in, the, in the matrix. So in other words, having this hash where I say, uh, okay, these are, these are all the billing services which appear at least once in the conversion matrix, meaning, meant that I could remove all the other, and I didn't have to do all these pairs uh, for all the billing services that, uh, that anyway I wasn't going to find in the end. So the, the algorithm is relatively simple. It's just a series of lookup. The first one is the filter, which I was just uh, mentioning, which is removing all the billing services that anyway will not match in the end. Uh, and that really, in most cases, I start with about 30 billing services for one customer, and, and I end up with three or four only. So instead of having 20, 20 times 19 pairs of uh, billing services, I ended up with maybe three times two or perhaps sometimes four times three. <coughs> so it's, it's really, it really makes the real big difference. So the result, so overall the process, the whole extraction process 
runtime was divided by 110. So it took 13, <coughs> 13 hours instead of 60 days. Uh, and of the 13 hours, there were 12 hours for the extraction of the full data from the, data, from the database, and one hour for the conversion, for the matrix co conversion. So in other words, the conversion itself went down from 59.5 <coughs> days to one hour. So that's about 1,400 times faster. Uh, OK. It's not a very complicated program, 210 code lines, so it's, it's no big thing. Two days for coding and testing, another couple of days for, for uh, acceptance test, integration test. OK. Um, the problem is, on my computer, I have a, a corrected version. <laughs> but on my flash key, I don't, I don't have the. So I had some conclusions here about the first case. Uh, but we will see them at the end, instead of uh, see, see them right now, because I prefer to have it there. So the second case is also a professional uh, case study, but it's not my job. It's the it's job of a friend. His name is Gibril. He's, Gibril is very well known in the French Perl community. He's, a, he's also a member of the Perl Mongers. He has been uh, known as a Perl expert for probably more than 20 years. I don't know exactly. He's the head of the Perl section in the main uh, IT forum and website in France. So he's, uh, so he's, he's uh, I don't know him personally. I know him. We have discussed over, over the line for many years, you know, over the phone, uh, on the forum. We even made a CPAN uh, uh, module together. But I've never met him personally. <laughs> anyway, just just to say that he's a quite good uh, programmer, and he's been he's been he's not he's really not a beginner. So the primary had is a, had to do with genetics. Uh, so what we have as an entry is a list of several millions ranges. So I just made an example here. So like the first range would be from from zero to fifty. The second range from 75 to 150. This, these are just dummy data. It's not, it's not the way these ranges look, but uh, this is just to give an example. And so we have millions of these ranges. And then we're given a region, which is, a, I, I'm calling it a region, but it's, it's just a range from coming from another uh, data. And what we want to know is, let's say I have a range which is uh, maybe 55 to 65, and I want to know if it's overlapping with any of the ranges which are there. So if I say 55, 65, obviously it's not matching that. And assuming my list here is in, a, is in proper order, in that case we say at the end, no match. But if the, if the region I'm given is, say, 50 to, to 80, then obviously we match the second range, and so we, so we will return match. Don't ask me. This is genetics. I don't know anything about genetics. <laughs> so don't ask me what's the use of that. I just don't know. Now, the problem here is, again, a very high performance problem. So this is more or less the code that was written by, by, by Gibril, by my friend Gibril. Um, basically, what it's doing is all these ranges are in a, are in a hash. And what it's doing is, uh, for each of the region that you want to test, it first sorts the keys of the hash to add to add them. And then it, it, uh, it looks for the beginning, it, it looks for the end, and it looks if it overlaps. If it doesn't, then it goes to the next range, and so on until the end. Now, for just for checking one region with a million of ranges that we have, it took 12 seconds. And there were hundreds of thousands of regions to check. So again, a major uh, performance problem. So th th just a quick calculation so that it would take 330 hours for, for 100,000 regions. It was actually more than 100,000. It was a few hundred thousands. But, um, now, if you look at this code, there are a number of mistakes, in fact. I mean, as I said, Gibril is a very experienced person, but he did, just didn't know how from which side to take it. So, so he asked me to, for some help, and I, 
the first thing I say, but, but why do you sort the keys? Well, you, you're going to look sequentially for every range, so what's the point of sorting them before you start? And especially, why do you sort them for each region? I mean, meaning, you know, if you do it 100,000 times, it means you're going to do the sort 100,000 times, which is not good. So that's, that's quite a, of a problem. And then sort is really useless in that case. But that's not, that's not the main problem. The main problem is somewhere else. And here I need the help of someone. I want to make a little game. Can you please pick a number uh, between 1 and 50? And don't tell me which one. OK? Now, is your number 1? No. Is it 2? No. Is it 3? No. Now, I'm being a bit silly, isn't it? I'm Wahrscheinlich glauben Sie, dass ich ein Dummkopf bin. This is this is a terrible way of making a search, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's doing, and that's what we're doing all the time, by the way, mm -hmm. most of us. Yeah. And there it's doing that. It takes the first range, no good, then it takes the second range, no good. Now there's a better way to make it. To make search. Can you pick a number between 1 and 64? Yeah. Is it 32? More than 32 or less than 32? Less. Is it 16? Less than 16 or more than 16? OK, <coughs> two questions. Yeah. Two questions. I was lucky. But uh, assume I wasn't lucky. How, long, how many questions did I need? Uh, Seven. Oh, yeah. Seven questions I needed. Because what happened, see how I, I, it told me less than 32. So I know that everything between 32 and 64, I can just throw away right away. I, don't, I mean, I've reduced my range or my search space by half. And then next time, OK, assume it wasn't 16, <laughs> uh, I would still have reduced by half and so on. So that after seven search, I would be there. So that's very basic computer science. I mean, it's no, it's no rocket science. It's not NASA or whatever. But uh, sometimes we forget the very basic thing. You know, we have ashes, ashes, as I showed just before with the other case, are very efficient to, to look for something. But an ash is not efficient when we're speaking about ranges. I mean, it's, it's no way of... <laughs> yeah. So the whole problem, the, the main problem with the program wasn't the fact that it was sorting every time and, and this wasn't needed, but the main problem was it's doing a sequential search. And we, as I said, we often do that. We often do that. But when, if we do that with a, with a list of 10, uh, with an array of 10 items, then it's fine. I mean, the computer is fast, and we, we are happy with that. Yes? Would it be a good idea to use uh, vectors? That could also be, yeah. But uh, it, it could be an idea. But it wasn't needed in that case, really. But. So the, the other problem I mentioned already before, when we were seeing the code, the sorting of the key is done for every region to be checked. So it's, so it's uh, a lot of time spent in that. Uh, and in fact, sorting of the key with that algorithm isn't useful. And we have to do it each time if we want to sort it, because, because the hash doesn't have any order. So, so uh, but the whole point is there's no point to use the hash if you're not going to do lookups, so you have to, uh, to use something else. So Now, if the ranges are sorted, then we can implement, I forgot to say that what we just did was uh, called binary search. Sometimes it's called also logarithmic search for obvious reasons, because uh, the search time is, is uh, proportional to the logarithm of the, of the uh, of the side of the problem. 
Uh, binary search, uh, we all do that uh, when we look for, for a name in a dictionary or, uh, or for, for a word, sorry, in a dictionary or when we look for a name in a, in a phone book. For those of us who are, who are old enough to know what a phone book is. <laughs> uh, okay, and that's it. the number guessing game. Here I, get, here I took a case where I wasn't so lucky as <laughs> in this case. Uh, so guessing number one in 64. One, two, three, four, five, six. I said seven, it's actually six. <laughs> So all what we have to do is to implement this binary search algorithm in the, in the, in the thing. So that's what, that's what I did. Uh, now, the idea of binary search is quite simple. Implementing it is sometimes a little bit more difficult. And uh, there were, uh, if, if you look at the Wikipedia page on binary search, you will see that they say that it's even surprisingly difficult and some algorithms were published by people, by very famous people uh, in computer science and were found to be wrong after only 20 years later. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> yeah, Knuth, that's right. <laughs> uh, but not for his book, for the, for the, lab tech, for the tech, uh, anyway. In that case, it's relatively simple. Uh, basically, it's, it's just what I did. You know, you just you, ju you just have an idea. You, when I load the, the, the data, I know what the overall range is, so I can then just split in half, see if I have to go before or after, and so on. And of course, I have to sort the data before once. Now. I didn't have uh, real data from the, from the application, from the genetic application, so I, I had to create some dummy data. So I created a million range with a, with a random function. The, ra the ranges should not overlap because, it's a, because uh, the data uh, didn't have any overlap. So, and, I, and, then I, and then I checked all sequential shots through, through the, the dummy data on, my, on this computer took uh, 21 seconds for one, for, one, for one region. And then I tried the binary search, zero seconds. So um, it wasn't good enough because it was difficult to figure out. So, so what I did is I added a loop to search the thing for 100 times. And it was still zero seconds. So I changed my loop to 5,000 5, times. And finally, I got five seconds. So in other words, uh, one region per second versus 20,000 regions per second. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, yeah, 20,000 faster, 20,000 20, times faster. And I was getting the same output, so I was happy that my, my binary search wasn't too buggy. <laughs> what do I say? Yeah. Still 12 minutes. Okay. So now this huge speed up only relates to the to the search of the uh, within the ranges. Uh, it doesn't count the time to to create the reference data to create the million range that I, I needed to use. Uh, the actual program was actually doing a little bit more than what we've seen here, and the real data set is probably less regular than the dummy data that I produced. But the main point is uh, uh, the, the, the program had to first read the reference data and sort it. Uh, so there was a startup time which was relatively long. And this I didn't try to optimize at all because maybe it was possible, but I just didn't know. So when we, when we ran on the actual machine, not on my computer, the, 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 the modified program, what we got is a in improvement by a factor of 35. So basically it went from 28 hours to slightly less than 50 minutes. So this conclusion was supposed to be the conclusion of the first, uh, of the first case, which I 
So a good, a good data structure can give a huge gain on performance by allowing a better algorithm, but I think this applies to both cases. Perl gives a great flexibility for constructing such data structures and to use them efficiently. So Perl is, uh, yeah, it's slower than a compiled language, but uh, usually. Uh, but it, it also gives some very good uh, tools that sometimes make it even faster than a compiled language. And uh, by, if I had been writing this thing in C, I probably would not have, I have I'm, I'm thinking now of the first test case, of the first uh, case study. Uh, so if I had written that in C, I would probably not have thought about using ashes because, because you don't use ash when, when, you, when, you, when you're writing C. I mean, the team in my, at my work converted to Perl for many tasks that we're doing. Uh, um, after, right after this, uh, this comparison between the two, the two solutions. And uh, it seems that I was speaking too fast this time, because <laughs> uh, that's basically what I had to say. Uh, so anyway, uh, sometimes coming back to the basic of computer science and thinking in terms of how can I do it better? You know, not making micro-optimization of this little part of the code, but trying to get the, the bigger picture can really be a lifesaver. And that's, and that's really, I'm talking about, the two examples are both professional life examples. I mean, it's not, it's not just uh, created for that. Are there any questions? You already asked all the questions. <laughs> What are you currently working on, optimizing, and what you can talk about? Do you have more of those problems? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I just took two examples, but I, I have, as I said, I have, I have a huge, uh, I have a huge customer database, and I am, and we're doing extractions and co and comparisons and and things like that uh, almost every day. So we, <laughs> so we do have a lot of uh, things like that. I just took two examples that were really uh, interesting, I think, because. Because, I mean, sometimes I don't have a solution. I mean, sometimes it just doesn't work. I mean, it, sometimes we have to, to say, no, this cannot be done because it's... But it doesn't happen so often, though. <laughs> uh, in most cases, we did find solutions. And any other question? <laughs> 